Hi everyone, I'm back here for card number two. We're going to be working on the on the art card. So I call it art because of the stencil that I used, but we're going to be using these little die cuts instead because it's pretty hard to share a stencil amongst all of you, especially when it's in kit form. Um, so this is the original panel here, and this is the card that I made from it, and this is what we're going to recreate right now. So last card was the Monarch Butterfly, and I was talking about, I mentioned Cecilia, right before my light snapped off on me, and it, it distracted me, so I never got back to talking about Cecilia. Cecilia comes to art journaling classes, she's a nice friend, and what happened at one point is when I was planning all these classes and and wanted to use tea bags in different ways for different classes for jelly printing. They're just so versatile. You can use them anywhere in any art form. But I did come up with these panels and I wanted to use these tea bags as a flower pot, which we're going to do next after this one is the last one and that is the teapot. So this is from David's Tea. And then I heard that David's Tea doesn't sell the filters anymore. And I thought, well, how how can that be? And somebody said they tried to get some and couldn't find any. So on my lunch hour, I went down to David's Tea and I said, I need a bag, a box of your filters, one or two boxes. And he says, we don't have any. I said, are you out? He said, no, we're not carrying them anymore. I, you you have to, I'm doing art with them. And he's looking at me silly. I said, I, I don't need them for the tea, actually. I, I need them to craft to art with. And I, I, I don't need the reusable bags. I need to have these filters. So I happened to have my cards, my panels with me all wrapped up in sari ribbon. So I got them out of my bag and I'm unwrapping them and I'm, I'm showing them to him and I'm showing him the crack pot that I did with this filter. And then I think he understood what I was looking for. But I was lamenting that I wasn't able to find any more. I couldn't even find any online. Well, Cecilia went on a hunt for me and found me a few boxes. And I'm so grateful. Thank you, Cecilia, because I do love these filters. And now I have enough to do all kinds of things. And the other tall... Um, steeping sacks. These are from Steep Tea. These were the tall ones that we used uh, yesterday in the Monarch Butterfly card. And these, I think, they, you don't have to get them from Steep Tea. If you know somebody that sells Steep, then they can certainly get some for you. But there's other steeping sacks, uh, other types of sacks than filters that uh, Cecilia has found for me as well. So I'm ever grateful. So now we can have all these classes and we can make crack pots by the hundreds. Really awesome. So this one here, this is the card that we're going to make. You need your uh, one of the panels, one of the watercolor panels, uh, the tea bag, and this little image which you're going to cut out, and rice paper and cheesecloth. And I've already kind of just tore things up to make sure they fit. Um, so I'm going to put this aside. We don't need this for now, as well as the letters. First thing we're going to do is to color up our tea bag and our base. And for that, I'm going to use the watercolors, going back to my palette. And this time we're going to use the Thalo Turquoise. And that is this one here. Look at, oh, look at that color. So I don't want a lot of color. I don't want strong color. I just want a light color. So I'm using more water than I am pigment. And what I'm going to do simply is just to run my wet brush along the edge of the tea bag. And because I have that water in there, it's, it's going to wick out some, which is good. That's what we want. And that's, that's really all I need to do for that. Then you have a little bit of extra liquid. So you've got, in your palette, you've got quite a bit of color. You could do a lot of tea bags like this. But I'm just going to give myself a few little dips and dops on the background. A couple more. And that's going to dry a little bit paler. I know that. So I'm just going to get the heat gun and we're going to heat set this really quickly. I'm using my tweezers again because you know what happens. You burn yourself. These things are so light and they dry so quick. So excuse the noise for a moment. Won't take long. And it smells good. These tea bags, I didn't uh, actually use them for tea. I just took them out of the package. I emptied them. I just took off the little staple that was at the top. I emptied the tea out of it. 
and here is the empty tea bag. So when you're heating it like this, you do get the aroma from the tea. And I'm not sure what it is. It might be the chamomile or it might be uh, nighty nights. It smells like nighty nights. I'm just going to heat set this because we need to work on this almost right away. Now when you're heat setting, you always want to get your, your glue gun warm first and then put it to the paper. Uh, if you're doing this, I, I, don't know, I don't know that it does anything, but if you direct the heat gun where you need it, hold it at a certain distance away so you don't cook and burn things, but as soon as things start to move or to dry, you want to move that around. But move it around intentionally. Waving it like this is just not going to do it. And that's pretty dry. I know it's dry because my paper has kind of buckled up. It's cockled up a bit. So we want to just straighten that out. So we're going to work with that. Now this tea bag is going to be glued right here. But I have done one already. And I see this one, you see the difference? This one, they do dry differently, so each time you do it, it's going to be a little bit different. And this one I did, I uh, used a micron pen and I went around the edges and doodled. I added some marks there, added some circles, which I didn't do on the original card, and a little bit of uh, black dots there. So whatever you want to do with this is just, it's going to be fine. And where is my Yoohoo glue stick? I'm going to glue this down. I'm going to commit and say this is what I want to do and do it. So it's pretty much in the middle of the card. Let me just check to make sure I'm in focus that you can see. Yeah, we're good. Okay, next we're going to, what are we going to use? We are going to use the tea bag or the cheesecloth. Now you have a little bit of cheesecloth. This is actually what my cheesecloth looks like, where I cut it from. I say this was eco-dyed because I did use natural plants and leaves to dye this. I have a summer studio in the backyard where I have some tables set up and I have a covering uh, and that's where I have my hot plates and my, my pots and I dye. I make dye baths and I dye various things. I use a lot of leaves and things around in the area and you just can't tell what color it's going to be all the time you can try but every time it's a mystery what it comes out and this I'm not entirely sure where the red came from I was doing a batch of red cabbage it could have come from there but the colors change it could have started off green and it turned into this color if you don't eco dye you can certainly use um, tea your tea from your tea bags. You can put some cheesecloth and run, run that through and then dry it off. Same thing that you would do in your tea dyeing paper. So this little bit I've trimmed here. Now you can have it, I want it to the side. I want it off. I want it peeking out and you can tear it and move this around and grunge it up a bit. Just change the shape of it. And this can be glued in place like this or you can tuck it under. Anytime, remember I mentioned that in the last one, anytime I glue something, it's usually in the middle until I decide. If I want to glue the edges down after, I can. So I can have it like that and then have the piece of rice paper on top. I could do that or I could have this on top and the rice paper on top of that. And I think that's where I'm going to go. So I'm going to run a bit of glue down the side and onto the paper itself, onto the background, and just kind of put this in place. And the Yoohoo glue holds these things in place quite well. I know we're adding another layer on top of here, so that's going to secure anything if it decides to take off. And then I'll put some glue on the back of my rice paper. And I'm not sure if there's a right a front and a back. And I'm just going to lay that there. So now it's overlapping both the cheesecloth and the tea bag. And what will go on next is this. And once you cut it out, it's not a die. It's just a stamp. But I, I wanted to do more black and white on this because it was um, there's the color of it. And I, in order for the color to show up, you need to have some contrast. And I think the black and the white offers excellent contrast. And for this... I am going to use uh, my art glitter glue. 
It's cardstock, so I don't think glue is uh, the Yoohoo glue is going to stick very well. So sometimes you need wet glue, and sometimes you need a Yoohoo stick. And I'll just line that up. Hold that down for just a second. Fix my top because now it got crooked. There we go. And you can, this is bothering me. I don't know if I'll trim it off or just tuck it under. I think I'm going to give it a little snip. There we go. Get rid of that. Let me put the cap on my glitter glue. If you guys have any of this art glitter glue, you know that little pin is very important. It has to be stainless steel. Otherwise, your pin is going to, it's going to rust your glue. And that's, that's ugly. That smells bad and it's ugly. And then now I think I'm going to put my art down here. Now, you see how this is lifting? I'm good with the placement. I know where it's going, so now I can glue it down and make sure it stays down. I'll add a little bit here. There we go. And the art, the A-R-T. I think I'd like that. I do like it down here, down at the bottom. Let me get my letters. They're awful tiny for me and hard to hold. So I will be using my tweezers for that. And we get the art glitter glue again, which is the back. This is the back. I'm gonna turn this so I can actually line it up. I don't need to have things um, always matchy matchy. But they, they do have to be even. I do like things that are even. Unless it has to be crooked. And then, of course, we can make crooked perfect. It has to be perfectly crooked. If that makes any sense at all. There's my art. One more T. I can't grab it. There you go. A little bit of glue there. And my tea. There we go. Put that pin back in again. And now the only thing I'm going to do is to take my black pen. And today I'm just using um, a Micron. A Micron works just fine. This is a number 305. Works good too. Nothing too tiny. And I'm just going to run it around the letters just for a little bit of interest. You can go on the outside of the letters. You can cut these uh, um, from different cut card stocks. You can, that's not bad. I'll go around here as well. You can color them if you like instead of just doodling on them. And there is the card. So the finishing touch is the crackle paste. Every one of these cards has crackle paste on it somehow. And this is the little pot that you're going to get. There's actually quite a bit in there. We just need a little for this. So what I want to do now is to add some crackle paste on here down the side. So I'll just scoop up a little bit. I'll turn this a bit. And I'm just going to lay it down and I'm going to sweep it up. I'm holding my palette knife at a bit of an angle. I do want to catch some onto the cheesecloth. I love the look of that. You can get some high areas, which means like little gobs instead of having it flat. And it's going to dry differently too when it crackles. So now we have a crackly layer. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to heat set this right away to show you the crackles because it's important for some of this to just set up on its own. I put it on a little heavy and it just needs to set before you can... Uh, hit it with the heat gun to really show up the crackles. If you want, after this is dry, you can, uh, just like the Monarch uh, base card, you can put some more ink and color and run it through the cracks, and I think that would look beautiful. So there is your card. It's got an opportunity for all kinds of things to be added onto it or just to leave it as is. And like the other ones, just put some score tape along the outside edge. Put that on one of the pre-folded pre-cut and scored card bases and you've got a lovely card all right so next up is the last one and that is the crack pot thanks for coming here bye bye